NASCAR wrapped up the second day of another next-gen test. The next-gen will debut next month at the Clash at the LA Coliseum, which is still really weird to say, but it is happening. February 6th, that's when it is, and then we get the points race, the points racing, I guess, at Daytona just a couple of weeks later. Now, we don't know how the next-gen car is going to race. We don't know who's going to be good, who's going to be bad. There could be some surprises, potentially, with a brand-new car. Some team could maybe figure it out. I don't know, but it is looking like it could be a very exciting 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season. Now, over the past couple of years, with the introduction of the next-gen car, supposed to make it easier for teams to operate, uh, for more teams to come in, uh, just due to costs and stuff being reduced with this next-gen car, we've seen a lot of new teams in the past couple of years enter the sport. The two biggest, I would say, in my opinion, are 2311 Racing, which was co-founded by current driver Denny Hamlin and NBA Hall of Famer, NBA legend Michael Jordan. And then another team is Trackhouse Racing, which was founded by former driver Justin Marks and also is owned by uh, singer, songwriter, rapper? I don't know if he's a rapper, but Pitbull. Uh, so yeah, there have been some big names that have invested in NASCAR as of late. And uh, yeah, this team that I'm about to talk about was founded in October, maybe, or they announced that they were going to try to go in the Cup Series in October. But the team is called Team Heiseberg, 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 Heiseberg. I don't know how to pronounce it going to be honest with you, but this was announced. They ran a test back a couple of months ago. They've continued to run tests, and their test driver has been none other than Jack Villeneuve, the 1997 Formula One world champion and the 1995 Indy 500 winner. Uh, he has been testing cars for them, and it came out today, or he announced today, that he will attempt to run in the 2022 Daytona 500 with Team Hezeberg. We're going to say Hezeberg. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I apologize, but sometimes words are hard, okay? But uh, yes, this team is a new team, brand new team to NASCAR with the next gen. It was announced initially that the team, it's co-owned by Tony, Toyn, Tony, we're going to say Tony, it's T-O-I-N-E, Hezemans, Hezemans. Uh, who was a race car driver. He raced in races like the 24 Hours of Le Mans, 24 Hours of Daytona, so endurance racing. Uh, it's also owned by a Dutch entrepreneur, Ernst Berg, and a Camping World Truck Series owner, Josh Ryumi. Uh, they, Ryum, Ryum, I don't know how to pronounce his name either. This video has turned into a video of me mispronouncing names. Sorry. Anyways, uh, that was announced that those guys were running the team and the driver would be Tony Hazeman's son, uh, Loris, that he would be driving the car in select races, most likely the road courses. Loris, um, he has raced in the European NASCAR series, so he does have experience behind the wheel of a stock car. It's not like, you know, this guy just got randomly picked up and is getting in a race car for the first time. He does have experience. He is the NASCAR Whelan Euro Series champion. Uh, so yes, he does have experience. He has shown that he can win in cars before. It was announced that he would be running a part-time schedule and they would be looking to run full-time in 2023. But today, uh, it was announced, or Jacques Villeneuve himself announced that he would be attempting to run the Daytona 500 this year. Now, this is a big deal for a few reasons. We're going to talk about the team. We're going to talk about Villeneuve. Let's start off with Villeneuve, the Canadian. A Canadian um, going to be in NASCAR. He has run some NASCAR races before, believe it or not. He's run just a few races in the Cup Series. Uh, let's see here. He has four starts in his Cup Series career. Nothing's happened. No top fives, no top tens, no lap sled, but he has completed 500 laps in his career. Meanwhile, in the Xfinity Series, he's had a little bit of success. He's actually led some laps. He's had some top fives, top tens, and nine starts. He has six top tens, four top fives, and 95 laps led. So, uh, you know, on the Xfinity side of things, I think he was in a Penske car at a road course. So, you know, that's, you know, that's, that suits him a bit more. Uh, but, you know, he did show that 
he has success when he's given the right car. Obviously, I mean, I don't think we should doubt his ability as a race car driver. He's a Formula One world champion. He's won the Indy 500. He's won in all other kinds of race cars. Uh, so, you know, he's a very talented driver, but right now he is 50 years old. Uh, he hasn't been in a stock car in over 10 years, almost 10 years, I want to say. Uh, so it has been a while since he has been in a NASCAR Cup Series or a NASCAR stock car. So, uh, you know, that's not necessarily a concern, but, you know, it is something to think about. But, um, you know, this is big for him. He talked about in his press conference today how he looks at some of the biggest races in the world that he wants to attempt or has attempted. He said the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the Indy 500, which he has won, and he also said the Daytona 500. He attempted to qualify for the Daytona 500 in 2008. He did not qualify, but he does want to attempt it again this year, and he wants to make it this year, obviously. Uh, take a shot at it, you know. And uh, with this new team, who knows? Maybe he could get into the Daytona 500. Uh, you know, obviously not everyone's, if there's more than 40 cars, not everyone will make it into the Daytona 500. So he's going to have to qualify on time or he's going to have to do well in the duels in order to make it. But it is very exciting to have a race car driver of his caliber and of his racing background to be in NASCAR. You know, we've seen guys jump around from other series and they've come to NASCAR. One of the ones that this situation reminds me of is Juan Pablo Montoya. Juan Pablo Montoya, he's won the Indy 500. He's won Formula One races. And uh, he was in NASCAR for a good chunk of years for Chip Ganassi Racing. He won some Cup Series races um, before eventually leaving NASCAR. Of course, he eventually became a big meme because he crashed into the back of a jet dryer and it exploded and caught the track on fire. Thankfully, uh, Montoya was okay, I believe. The truck driver and crew was okay, I hope so. Um, but yes, that of course is NASCAR fans. When they hear Juan Pablo Montoya, they think, oh, the jet dryer incident. Oh, he crashed into the jet dryer under caution. How silly. But you know, the reality is Juan Pablo Montoya is a very good race car driver. He has won in everything he's driven in. He has won, what, I think he's won in some of those endurance races. I know he's won Formula One races. I know he's won Indy 500. So um, that's why it kind of reminds me of Juan Pablo Montoya, just in terms of what he's raced before. He's raced every type of car. He's won in every type of car, it seems like, but, uh, NASCAR is not one that he has won in yet, but he does want to compete in it. And obviously the Daytona 500 is one of the biggest races in the world. Now, um, you know, you look at other races, Indy 500, that's a race known around the world and the 24 hours of Le Mans, everyone knows about that. Uh, but, you know, to hear Daytona 500 with those races is a pretty big deal, in my opinion. When you look at NASCAR, NASCAR is a motorsport that is based in the United States. All the races are in the United States. Everything's the United States. The majority of the fans are in the United States. But there are some international fans. There are some. Now there's an international team, which we'll get to in a minute. But this is a big deal because, you know, the international factor um, you know, everyone, the stereotype for NASCAR is a uh, American redneck, whatever, you know, yeehaw, cowboy, American flag, yeah, woo, drinking beers, that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, um, which is, I mean, it's, it is what it is, obviously, you can't control that, but, uh, NASCAR's got a great fan base. They have a very passionate fan base, uh, good attendance at races, uh, in the South, at least, you know, Talladega, Daytona, some of these bigger races, and uh, NASCAR fans love them some NASCAR. I mean, that's the fact of the matter. Extremely passionate fan base. And, you know, as I said, with majority of the U.S. But you look at other types of motorsports, you know, Formula One, these endurance cars. Uh, even IndyCar has, I want to say, a good chunk of international fans. I don't know how much, but IndyCar is based in the U.S., so it is a majority American open wheel series. But I feel like... They probably have a good chunk of international fans because you see form X Formula One drivers go over there a good amount. So, um, but yeah, we're getting off track here. So I think that this is really good for the international kind of thing. You know, a Canadian world champion. So you might get some more views from Canada, but I'm sure people in Europe are going to be uh, interested in how Jacques Villeneuve does in the Daytona 500 if he qualifies for the Daytona 500. So. Uh, you'll get some more eyeballs on Villeneuve if he is in this race 
Uh, obviously, the Daytona 500 is usually one of the most viewed, if not the most viewed races of the year. It's the Super Bowl of NASCAR. Um, it's already sold out, and it's it's more. There's still more than a month until the race, so it is the biggest race in NASCAR. It's already got a ton of eyes on it. It's always usually the most viewed race of the season. So when you have that, and then you're going to have an addition of an international, well-known world champion, uh, Indy 500 winner in a car for this race, I think that's a really big deal. And I think that's great. That's something positive for NASCAR that they could use to their advantage in terms of promotion in terms of talking about you know obviously you want to keep the focus on the guys who are going to be full-time drivers you know defending champion Kyle Larson defending maybe defending Daytona 500 and underdog champion Michael McDowell other drivers like Kevin Harvick uh, Martin Truex Jr. Kyle Busch uh, most popular driver Chase Elliott you're going to want to focus on those guys the most but you know there will be I think there will be some focus or some talk about a former Formula One champion, a IndyCar champion, um, being in this race, especially when he hasn't raced in NASCAR in so long and he hasn't, you know, been too successful in NASCAR, I want to say. But it'll be interesting to see how he actually um, does in this race. And it's it's basically the same point with this team. Uh, you got to, I think, the driver is Dutch, the team owner. I know, obviously, the entrepreneur is Dutch. But I think Hazemans, yeah, he's Dutch as well. So, you know, the Dutch racing fans, they are quite passionate. If you do not know, Max Verstappen, the most recent Formula One world champion, um, he is Dutch and he has this following of Dutch fans called the Orange Army and they are quite the passionate fan base for Max Verstappen. So, uh, you know, Team Hazenberg, if they can do well in NASCAR or, you know, if they can get a solid footing in NASCAR, that could potentially help uh, a bigger, that could reach out to a bigger audience. You know, obviously you want to make the fans that you already have happy. I think that's something NASCAR is trying to do. They're trying to make the fans that they have right now, they're trying to make them happy. More short tracks, more road courses, which is what fans have been asking for. Getting rid of some of the cookie cutter mile and a half tracks. That's what NASCAR has been doing. They've been, you know, appealing to the current fan base. But you also want to gain fans as well. Um, NASCAR's made some moves to try to gain some new fans. They've been going to different places around the country. They now race at Coda, which is in Austin, Texas. They've gone, they're going to St. Louis with Gateway. So they've expanded their horizons in multiple ways, whether it comes to going to a different racetrack, a different city, a different area. But also for this, I mean, you know, obviously NASCAR didn't tell someone, buy a team right now. But, you know, the fact that they have an international uh, multiple international investors into one team, a new NASCAR team with an international or multiple international drivers, I think that's really good for NASCAR. That's something that's very positive for them, uh, you know, to have another fan base potentially or to gain some fans from another country, another region of the world. I think that's a really good thing for NASCAR. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a cool story. Uh, how's he going to do in the 500? Villeneuve? I don't know. I don't even know how the best teams are going to do in the 500 because this is a brand new car. We haven't seen this car race at all in a plate race. So I honestly have no clue, but I am very intrigued by the storyline, very intrigued by this team and by Villeneuve. Obviously, the other guy, he's probably going to be racing more if I had to guess. Uh, he's a younger guy, so he's going to get more time in the car. Villeneuve, he is 50 years old, uh, but I am very curious to see how he does uh, if he qualifies for the 500, if he how he does, if he qualifies in the race. But I'm very intrigued by this story. I'm very intrigued by this uh, combination here. A brand new team, uh, a very successful race car driver that a lot of people know about being put into the car. I think it's a very fun thing uh, to talk about, very th fun thing to look at. Uh, the team, hopefully they end up uh, doing good. Hopefully... What if Villeneuve shocked the world and won the Daytona 500? That'd be some story. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all I can think of for now. Other news, I mean, Dale Jr. tested in the in the the next-gen car at Daytona. for He subbed for Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson is at the Chili Bowl right now. So uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. stepped in. He tested. So we had an Earnhardt and a Villeneuve on a racetrack together. That is... Uh, 
2022 starting off pretty weird for the racing world, but once again, I mean, no other news that I can really think of. Um, the Daytona 500 is sold out, as I said earlier in this video, but I just really want to talk about this. I think it's a very intriguing kind of, I keep on saying story, like a storyline, but I'm very interested by this. I, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to see the first points race of the next gen car be won by Jacques Villeneuve. That would be kind of a cool story. Is that just me? Okay, but uh, yeah, as I said, we've seen former drivers from other racing series, specifically Formula One, uh, come into NASCAR before. As I said, Juan, Juan Pablo Montoya being one of the big ones, but you know, we saw Kimi Raikkonen do a couple of races. Uh, but yeah, Villeneuve obviously has done a couple of races, but hopefully he qualifies for the 500 this time. Hopefully he gets to compete in the big race. Sounds like it's something he's wanted to do. Uh, he put it in that tier, the top tier list of races around the world with the 24 Hours Le Mans and uh, the Indy 500. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, uh, us NASCAR fans, we know the importance of the Daytona 500, how big of a deal it is. But uh, to hear the importance of it from someone, you know, outside of the U.S., outside of the, the NASCAR realm to say that, that's a pretty cool thing if you ask me. So... Uh, yeah, once again, just really, really cool story that I thought I'd tell you guys about, give you my opinion on uh, to see how that goes. But yeah, Daytona 500 is coming up. Uh, we got some paint schemes to rate. We will do that. What's today? Wednesday. We will do that on Friday. Friday is a good day to rate some paint schemes. So we will rate some paint schemes on Friday. As I said the other day, there are some that are really good. And there are some that just, uh, they're ugly. So yeah, we'll look at those and uh, make sure to have a great rest of your day. Uh, if you like this, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. That would be neat. Uh, but yeah, once again, have a great rest of your day.